Hi everyone, welcome back for another video. Today's is the November's solar energy update video. And we're back here in my garage because the first thing I want to talk about is this Give Energy battery again. I'm not sure why, but I was selected to be one of the first people in the UK to receive the latest firmware update for this battery. So the firmware was upgraded from version 524 to 531. And on the surface, it looked like the upgrade was really, really good. And that what they were doing was changing the charging rates and trickle feeding the battery at the end and squeezing more energy into the battery so that you actually had greater capacity. Now that's great from a marketing point of view, that's great from um, a company perspective that they can say they're selling a battery with more capacity. That's great for the customer because you've got more capacity, so you're getting better value for money. Or are you? What I noticed was that the reduced charging rates were quite significant. So from 90%, they were throttling down to, let's say, one kilowatt. Now I haven't got the exact numbers because I didn't track it specifically, but I'm approximately in the ballpark for where these numbers are. So about 90%, one kilowatt. And then it throttled down again at 92% to 600 watts, and it kept throttling down as the percentage got closer to 100%, pushing the time that it takes to get to 100% further and further away. So that by the end, when it was getting closer to 100%, it was only charging at 180, 190 watts. And basically, you know, the impact of that is giving you more capacity, but the impact also is making it harder to charge to 100% because it needs more time. Pushing back the time it takes to get to the 100% means that on days like today in the winter, you've got less daylight hours to charge up, so you've got less time to charge up. So let's put that into perspective, that in the summer in the UK, I probably get around 15 hours of daylight, 15 hours of charging on the solar panels, where right now in late November, what I'm getting is six. So basically the solar panels are coming alive and starting to provide energy around nine o'clock in the morning. And then it ends just before three o'clock in the afternoon. So I get three hours in the morning, three hours in the afternoon maximum, and that's it. So if it takes an hour to two hours to get to 90% charging the battery, and then it takes an extra hour to two hours to get to 100%, then that's without you using any of the energy and it going up and down, using some energy and then it starts recharging, using some energy and then it starts recharging. That time that it takes to get to 100% is just not achievable. I know it's straight away with that new firmware upgrade that I wasn't charging to 100% day after day. So I reported that back to Give Energy and let them know that it was having an impact on customers and you know they need to think about they need to think about the firmware updates they're making and whether they are good for the customer or just good for the company. I, I think there is a bit of a theme there with Give Energy and the software. It does seem more appropriate for the company and the image of the battery and the marketability of it. They don't seem to think about the customer as much. This latest firmware update, in my opinion, gives the customer less value from the battery because there's less usable percentage they're going to get hold of. In the summer, maybe, um, you could benefit from that, that trickle charging. But the time when you really want the battery is the winter. That's the, when the time you're more desperate for it because you've got less solar energy and you've got less daylight hours. So I wasn't very happy with the firmware upgrade. So um, having said that, they offered to put the firmware upgrade back to an older version, which I agreed to. I said to them, um, does it involve a battery recalibration? Because that I don't want to do, because that dumps all the energy out of the battery and then draws it back in and fills it up to 100% from the grid. So I don't really want to be doing that. They told me that it was just to the inverter so the battery wouldn't need to be recalibrated. Yeah, right. <laughs> Well, it did. So that's now three installations of firmware. The initial one when I first went live, the second one to upgrade, and the third one to back the version out. So it's three software upgrades, three battery recalibrations. So that's three times I've dumped the energy back out of the battery to the grid. Basically, if I can't use it, it goes to the grid all the way down to zero. So not 20% left, not 10% left, completely to zero. They empty the battery and then they refill it completely with whatever resources available. The other day when uh, this firmware upgrade was put back again, um, there was no solar energy. It was one of the worst uh, days for solar energy, so it all came from the grid. And obviously while it's charging and discharging, which took virtually the whole day, I think the process started around 10 o'clock in the morning and finished around 3 o'clock, just before the peak hours um, on Octopus Agile. So um, it was all day that it was doing this calibration. Not a good situation. 
The reason I mention that is not because, oh, wow, I had to use some energy from the grid, you know, big deal, because, yeah, you know, it's a pound or two pounds worth of energy. It's, it is no big deal. But it's the principle of the thing. The battery is supposed to be saving me using energy from the grid. But here I am just a couple of months into using this battery and already three times I've dumped the energy out to the grid and drawn it back in. I'm not really liking the frequency of that occurring and it doing the opposite to what I'm purchasing the battery to do. The principle just feels wrong. And then if I think about, well, if there are thousands or tens of thousands of customers with this, and then they all have software versions that upgrade, then they're all going to be dumping energy out to the grid and drawing it back in, potentially at peak times. And, and there's the, um, the extra rub on this that makes you even more frustrated that Overnight before the recalibration occurred, I charged the battery up using cheap energy from Octopus Agile. So I was really, really happy. I'd got a price plunge. I think I charged up for half a pence a kilowatt hour. So all very, very happy, all very, very good. Lots of energy to be used during the day. So I've made a good decision. Only for them to dump it all out to the grid and then re-import back again and taking all day to do it at a higher expense. I think the price that I paid for that energy that it re-imported was somewhere between 10 and 12 pence a kilowatt hour. So, you know, not terrible because it did finish just in time for the peak hours. Um, but I had to, um, I wouldn't say shout at them, but I had to be quite assertive to say, if you're gonna do this, do it now, because I do not want this to be drawing the energy from the grid during peak hours after four o'clock in the afternoon where prices are 30 to 35 pence. But also it's the peak on the grid. The whole point of having this battery um, in some people's eyes is because you're helping the environment, you're helping the grid, you're helping not having to build extra power stations. So if they're going to upgrade firmware and thousands of customers are all going to be importing from the grid, potentially at peak times because they're not very good at scheduling this and it takes all day. Now again, remember, this is a 5.2 kilowatt hour battery. What if I had the 8.2? What if I had two of them? What if I had 10, 14, 20 kilowatt hour batteries with this system? It literally would take all day and all night to sort itself out on a recalibration. That's not very good, and I, I don't like the idea of that. So, yeah, if Give Energy are watching, you need to sort that out. Firmware upgrades shouldn't be doing a battery recalibration. It doesn't need it every time. So, one, the scheduling needs to be improved, but two, how on earth do you do that? How do you work out the best time to do a battery recalibration? Basically, you want the battery already empty. So let's say you want to let the customer know and the customer uses all the energy for, let's say, 10, 11 o'clock at night. Then when it's cheap electricity, you want to top the battery up. But you need that to be done inside just a couple of hours. But of course, you can't do that because this only charges at, when it's cold, 2.3 kilowatts or when it warms up, 2.8 kilowatts. But then as it reaches 90%, then it throttles down a lot as well. So you're not even going to be able to charge up on cheap electricity overnight. So the firm upgrade process and the impact on the customer, not very impressed with that, not very impressed at all. So it's not also negative in November. So let's head on indoors uh, where it's warmer and I can update you on the statistics for the month of November, which were better than expected. <laughs>